So here we start with heart. Interestingly, there are no good, bad or ugly hearts. Neither are there small or large hearts. In fact, if you have an enlarged heart, you are in for a trouble because it is a disease. So today we are going to study heart. Now heart you know is a very very important organ and very delicate also. So obviously it has to be well protected. If we see where is it located, we will find it is in the thoracic cavity. Well inside the rib cage. All vital organs of our body are protected by some part of skeleton like brain is protected by cranium, heart is protected by the rib cage and heart is surrounded by the two lungs and it rests just above the diaphragm. So that is the location of the heart. Now the size, size of a heart is that of a closed fist like this, this much only, size of a closed fist fist. Weight, you know men have a heavier heart. So the weight of a male heart is 300 grams. While that of females it is 250 grams. Now the size, size we have done but here we can also have the length and the breadth. Length is 12 inches and breadth is 9 inches. So these are, this is how a heart is and of course we all know its color is red. We can view heart both from the upper side when it is called a dorsal view. and also from the back side or the lower side which is the ventral view. Just like any other organ, heart also requires blood supply because after all it also needs oxygen and energy released by cellular respiration. So there is a special artery, the coronary artery which supplies blood to the heart. And after this, we will come to know what is inside the heart. Heart is a hollow muscular organ, hollow and muscular. Now let us see what is inside the heart. When we cut a longitudinal section, which is generally called LS, we find that heart has four chambers or you can just say this that there is a kind of divider which is called a septum which divides heart into right and left side. Further both the sides are divided into upper and lower side. So in total we have four chambers of heart. The upper chambers are called atria. Singular is atrium and the lower ones are called ventricles. Now if we compare the structure of auricles and ventricles, we find that atria are smaller in size, they are thin walled and they are the upper chambers, while ventricles are larger and they are thick walled. Now why this difference? 
actually shape of a heart is somewhat like a triangle the apex is broad and the tip is pointed and you know the general impression is the heart is on the left side but actually it is not really on the left side it is only the tip which is tilted towards the left side and due to strong ventricular contractions one feels as if heart is on the left side so there are these are artery are smaller and the upper part while ventricles are larger and the lower part which ends in a tip now why this difference of thin wall and thick wall because you see it is the auricles which receive blood and they pump it to ventricle which is just connected with it but ventricles they pump blood to other organs now if we go by the same logic obviously the difference should be there even between the walls of the ventricles so that is why the left ventricle has thicker wall than even the right ventricle now let's move forward how does blood come from one part to the other not from right to left or left to right there is no communication between left side and right side however blood can come from auricle which is also called the atrium to ventricle and similarly both sides right as well as left so there is communication between auricle and ventricle what is this communication it is through an aperture called auriculo ventricular aperture now if there is this passage of auricular ventricular aperture is <coughs> without any uh, demarcation then blood would just keep coming now just like we have a door for entrance into a room there is a kind of a door between the atrium and the ventricle but in biology we don't call it door we call it a valve so the auricular ventricular aperture is guarded by an auricular ventricular valve now why this valve the reason is that if that valve was not there the blood will go back to the atrium so the valve prevents the backward flow of blood auriculo ventricular valve so you can imagine that if valves are not functioning properly it can lead to heart problems see the main function of heart is to pump blood so which obviously means that first heart has to receive blood and then only it can pump blood so there are blood vessels which are associated with heart so now what we are going to study is which are the blood vessels which are associated with heart blood vessels associated with heart there are four type of blood vessels which are associated with heart first is the vena cava it is again of two types superior and inferior then there is pulmonary artery then there is pulmonary vein and then there is aorta now the function of vena cava is to collect blood from various parts of the body and bring it back to the heart which part of the heart right atrium you see right side is always for the deoxygenated blood and it the atrium always receive the blood and ventricles always pump the blood 
and the left side is for the oxygenated blood. So the vena cava, the superior one collects blood from the upper parts of the body like head, shoulders and the inferior one collects from the lower parts like organs present in the thorax, abdomen, legs. The pulmonary artery takes blood. Remember I told you it is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood. So it carries deoxygenated blood to lungs where the exchange of gases will take place and the blood will become oxygenated. The oxygenated blood is brought back to the left atrium by the pulmonary vein. Left side always for the oxygenated blood. Then aorta starts from the left ventricle and it supplies blood to all parts of the body. So these are the four vessels that help the blood, heart to pump blood. Now coming back to valves. Valves are not only present between auricles and ventricles or the atria and the ventricles, they are also present at in the pulmonary artery and the aorta. But there their name is semilunar valves. Once again, remember wherever there are wells, whether it was as it was in the veins or it is in the heart, their function is always to prevent backward flow of blood. Now after this, we will come to the circulation of blood inside the heart. The circulation of blood inside the heart is you can say it can be divided into two parts the pulmonary and the systemic. Pulmonary is the one which involves lungs. Whether it is supplying blood to lungs through pulmonary artery or collection of blood the oxygenated blood from lungs by pulmonary vein that is the pulmonary circulation. Second is systemic circulation which is concerned with other body parts. So the vena cava and the aorta is in the systemic while pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein are concerned with pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. Vena cava and aorta. Now what did you observe that blood flowed through heart twice, first it came to the right side then it went to lungs and then again it came back to not the right side but the left side and from there then it went to all body parts. So how many times the heart, blood has flowed in the heart twice and that is why this kind of circulation is called double circulation. In human, the human heart you can say shows double circulation. So does that mean there is any single circulation also? Yes. In animal like fishes, there is single circulation because they do not have two atria and two ventricles. They have only one atrium and one ventricle. So what happens to oxygenated and deoxygenated blood? it gets all mixed up. From heart it goes to gills where the exchange of gases takes place and then it is supplied to all parts of the body. The frog's heart is a little more complex because when auricles are two, the artery are divided to right and left side but once again the ventricle is only one. 
So, some mixing of blood is there. Even in the reptiles, the ventricle, though it is divided, but only incompletely. So, all these animals are cold blooded animals. which means that their temperature is body temperature is affected by the temperature of the environment. Now, I will tell you why they are cold blooded and why we are hot blooded. See mammals and birds they are hot blooded animals. What does that mean? That means their body temperature is not affected by the temperature of the environment. That is why you know our body temperature does not change with the season. Our bod normal body temperature of a human being is 98.4 degree F or 36 degree Celsius. It does not happen that in winter we have less temperature or in summers higher. How do we achieve this? The reason is that heart is four chambered. There is no mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So, the transportation of oxygen in a four by a four chambered heart is much more efficient. So, this is a more efficient system, more efficient oxygen transporting system. So, from this it becomes clear the significance of having four chambers in the heart. Now, if we just make a flow chart of circulation, it will be like this body parts, deoxygenated blood, now why deoxygenated blood? Because after cellular respiration carbon dioxide was produced which came into blood and this will be collected by vena cava both superior and inferior and now this will open into which part of the heart right the right atrium. Now, when the right atrium is receiving blood, naturally it has to be of bigger size. So, it expands, you can say it relaxes and receives the blood. From right atrium, it goes to right ventricle. Now, how will that happen? The right atrium contracts. So, the blood opens the auriculoventricular valve and comes to the right ventricle. When it comes into the ventricle, as it wants to go back, the valves tightly close. So, it cannot go back. From where will it go? From the right ventricle, it comes to pulmonary artery. which will take blood to pulmonary I told you is concerned with lungs. So, it will come to lungs. Now, here exchange of gases will take place. And pulmonary vein will bring blood to Now, which part of the heart? The left side. Now, it will come to the left atrium. Once again, left atrium will expand, receive blood, then contract and blood will flow into left ventricle. And when the ventricle contracts, blood will go to aorta which will again take blood to the body parts. 
So, this is how the blood flows in our body and is called the double circulation. So, when does your heart beat? When you are scared, you see a snake or when you get less marks or is it when you see Katrina calf? Heart but actually beats all the time. If it will not beat, our life will be over. So, heart beating of course can increase or decrease but it is always there. Now, what is this heart beat? Heart beat is rhythmic contraction and relaxation of heart that produces the sound of lub and dub. So, we can write this it is the rhythmical contraction and relaxation of heart that produces the sound of love and dub. You see love is a low pitch sound, but it lasts for a longer time while dub is a high pitched, but it lasts for a shorter duration. The heartbeat can be counted with the help of a stethoscope. The normal heartbeat for a man is 72, 70 to 72 times per minute. But in case of a woman, it is 80 times per minute. So, it is a normal practice that when a doctor wants to check you, he whether you are suffering from any infection or any problem they use stethoscope that is just to count your heartbeat. There is another way of checking and that is by counting pulse. This was our heartbeat and now the pulse. How does a doctor count the pulse? They normally keep, keep their finger like this. So, it is this index finger which is kept on the left wrist just below the thumb. If you do this, you will be able to feel a throb. It is this throb which is called the pulse. So, by counting pulse also, we can come to know whether everything is fine with a person or not.